the dog's away. This is uh, <coughs> an interview with George Beecham being conducted at Terrigal, just north of Gosford, yes. on the Friday the 23rd of August 2002. George, thank you very, very much for making yourself available for this interview. My pleasure. And if you could start by telling me the year that you were born. Yes, I was born on the 29th of April, 1915. 1915, so that makes you 87 right 87. now. 87. 87 years of age. And uh, were, you, were you born in New South Wales? No, I was born in London, England. London, England. And I came to Australia at the age of six years old. And went from London to a little town called Woolmoon, which is six miles from Leighton, in the state of New South Wales. Fine, and uh, you, you obviously had your primary school education yes. there, mm -hmm. and secondary school education. I was there. I had to leave school when I was fourteen because my father died, and uh, no other income, so I had to go out and get a job. Yes, and what what did you actually do? I got a job. I was lucky enough in 1929 to get a job in a pharmacy as general tractotum, deliverer of medicines and sweeper of floors. But you must have acquired some skills, some yep. skills in dispensing and that sort of thing whilst you were in the pharmacy. Yes, I, I learned by experience. I learned from listening to people who knew more than I did, and uh, I was fortunate that I could pick up things fairly quickly. And uh, I picked up photography. Being in the pharmacy in those days, the the pharmacy seemed to be the the uh, dropping off shop for photography. Everybody took their film for the chemist to be developed. Either he did them or he sent them away. Yeah. And in my case, the pharmacy worked for he had his own darkroom. And uh, he got sick one day. And it was off for a fortnight, and uh, I stepped in and did the job for a fortnight, and uh, I was so successful that he said, well, you can do it permanently now, give me a break for it, I hate the job anyway. So I became then chief photographer as well as, as uh, dispenser of medicines and uh, selling of pills and potions. Right, so then if we get to 1939... It's 1929, I suppose. Right, okay. So you're you're, a, you're quite a young person. Yeah, I was nearly 15, then going 14. And then you go through the experience of the Depression? Yeah, I went right through the Depression. I managed to keep my job. And uh, I stayed there until the war started. and. Uh, Went through the usual things a young bloke does, push bikes, motorbikes, no money. Uh, wages in those days are very, very small, of course, price was high over too, but it was pretty hard to run a motorbike on a few bob a week, as well as keep send money home to mum. We had to live, I had an elder brother, but he was married. And, uh, by 1940, I was getting very, very bored and very fed up with things. And uh, I think when the war came, I saw it as an opportunity to get away from the humdrum. And as being a pommy, in those days, we were all pommy bastards in those <laughs> days, because there was a lot of racist, racism in, in Australia in, that day, you know, in those years. And uh, having relations in England, I thought, well, there's a chance to go and see the other side of the Pommy family. But right. unfortunately, I went the wrong way. I right. went to uh, South East Asia. So you, you're enlisted in the AIF? Yes. And I understand it was in the seven, second, tenth field ambulance. Yes, well, I listened and I went in a Wagga camp. Oh. And from Wagga camp, I went to Liverpool, where I joined the Second Tenth Field Ambulance. Uh -huh. with one of the original members. Now, how did the Second Tenth end up being in Singapore? How did they end up? Yes. That's a good question. I think they were sent there. 
Okay. And uh, the Denver Park. There were two brigades went away. Yeah. The uh, 22nd Brigade and the 27th Brigade. We were originally attached to the 22nd Brigade. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they sent the 22nd Brigade to Singapore, instead of sending us, they sent the 2nd 9th from Victoria. And uh, our blokes were all right, because we've been, uh, we've been uh, training for nearly 12 months, and we thought we should have gone. Mm. So much so, we <laughs> called a bit of a strike. We nearly all got court-martialed, and the CEO called us out and gave us a lecture, and said, I'm doing my best to get you away, he said. And he said, be patient, I'll get you away. <laughs> and then finally, we did, we finally went away with the 27th Brigade. And when we got to Singapore, the blokes didn't like it and started to complain again. <laughs> One night the LCO called a, called a uh, I suppose you call it a parade. I think it was after their former mess, and I think they had a few too much to drink. And he called and he gave us a lecture on what mongrels he, he thought we were because we complained about being in Australia. He said, now I've got your eyes here, you've planked about being a Malay. I said, what do you want, he said. What do you want? He said, any of those who are not satisfied, pray themselves to me in the morning, he said, and I'll see you get away. So and only one bloke prayed himself in the morning, and <laughs> he got 14 days in the drink. <laughs> well, he got away. <laughs> so this was 1940? This is 1940. Yeah. You then went up on now, the Malay? No, this is 1941 now. Is it? Yeah. Thank you. 1941. Mm. So you then, the unit was then deployed with the brigade into Malaya? That's right. We, we, we went to Singapore first off. Mm. So you, you deployed into Malaya? Yep. And the Japs assault? Yep. And the brigades, both brigades, all, all the units start withdrawing down the peninsula? They took their positions there, where it was. Now you were at Gemis. No, I, I started at Gemis, I came back. Down. You were there when the highly successful ambush yeah, was yeah. conducted? 15th of February I got there. 15th of February 19th? Sorry, no. 15th of January. Yes. Yeah. Big pardon. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so that, you, you were there for that highly successful ambush and then the quick withdrawal of the unit? Yeah, we slowly made our way back down the down the uh, coast road until we got back to Singapore again. Yes. Then yeah. I ended up at St Andrew's Cathedral. Yes. And you were there when it was bombed. Mm. Yeah. Now, so you, you then get to capitulation on the 15th of February. Yeah. 1942. 1942. And where did you go? Did you go actually into Changi or? Yeah, I, we went to St Andrew's Cathedral. To, uh, to Changi, and I was in Changi for about uh, well, maybe a couple of months, and we went into Singapore to a place called Adam Park on a working party. Is that where the memorial was built? That's where they stuck? built the first, uh, the first more Japanese built a memorial there. Mm. Uh, I think it was up near the reservoir. Mukherjee Reservoir, I think it was, yes. or the Gulf, or something. I'm a bit hazy on that. Yeah. Where exactly it was, and we were running a hospital in Adam Park. Now, from Adam Park, when did they start sending? From Adam, from they start sending. Uh, I say around about June. I'm not too sure. They around about June, the first crowd went to Borneo. They sent some of my unit to Borneo. I think it, it was not a, a force went to Burma. No, A force went there. To and then Burma. B force went to. But that, that was that was from Singapore. That was from mm. Changi. Ah yes. So I went from Adam Park. Yes, yes. yes. They sent from Adam Park. They sent the first crowd went of our mob to Borneo. And with the remainder of us stayed at Adam Park until about November, December, and they got to the jail for Christmas. At Christmas in Changi, and then in April '43, we went up from F Force to Thailand. And I think it was just before Anzac Day that you got off at Bampong. Was it about? Could be. I, I, could, I couldn't. 
we can tell you the date now, no idea. The relevance of why, I, I, I had a feeling that it was the 23rd of April. It could be, could be. Uh, and the coincidence is that on the 25th of April was when D, D and Dunlop Force started digging Konya Cutting. Uh -huh. So you would have then started walking north. Yeah, that's right, that's right. How far was the walk? As far as I can remember, about 386 kilometres. And over how many days? I can't remember. I think it was about 10 or 14, I think. Yes. Can't remember exactly. Did you have any days of rest? Did Did you have any rest days? On the no, walk? no, no. We used to, uh, we used to, uh, we used to walk of a night, sleep of a day. That's if they let you, but sure there's something to do. Now, when did you get associated with Dr. Royal, wrong, Captain Royal Mill? Royal oh, Mills? right from the early days of the unit yes. in Liverpool and Bathurst. But were you, when, when you were walking to uh, he was a, he was, Thailand, he, were you with, in company no, with No, he them? was ahead of me. He was a train ahead of me. I, yes. I got no ideas on train one. I could be wrong, yes. but I think he was, I know he was ahead of me. I was on train six. Now, I believe that you went, did you go right through to Song Kirai? No, I went up as far as what we call in those days Shumaniki. Shumaniki, yes. Shumaniki. Mm -hmm. So that means southern, well, southern yeah. Nikki. Mm -hmm. And when did you get associated with Pete uh, Hendry? Oh, right from the unit days. I knew mm -hmm. Bathurst and, and uh, Liverpool. All right, from Shumaniki, how did you actually end up being Oh, Roy Mills was well, medical, he, medical he, he was on the same train as I was. Mm -hmm. and Peter and I, we both marched up to the same camp. Yes. So we knew each other then. And right? I think you mentioned that Peter then sent you back to work with He Roy. sent me back to Roy Mills at Concord. Mm -hmm. Roy wanted, Roy was short of orderlies, mm -hmm. and he, he wanted four second tenth bucks or as many as he could get. And uh, Peter sent me back with three other chaps to, to Roy Mills. That was back in Concord. Mm -hmm. And who, the other three guys, were they all medical orderlies or? As far, yes, yes, as far as I know, but they weren't, they weren't as well trained as the second tenth bunch were. Oh. Okay, so you're, you're back with Roy. Yep. And as I understand it, you were forced by the Japs to move a number of times. Yeah, we, m we moved all together four or five times. Four, I'm sure of. Five, I'm not quite sure. And what was involved in a move? Well, pick up everything, our tents, our kitchen gear, our wounded, our sick, oh, sorry about wounded, our sick, whatever gear we had, whatever we supplied we had, take with us, we had to move everything. And of course, uh, when you got the new camp, did you, you, have, did you have to set, set it up? Set it up to reverse, and that happened before. Don't yes. Mm. Now, the what types of uh, illnesses or complaints did you Well, witness? the common ones, malaria, dysentery, berry, berry, pellagra, uh, scabies, and then of course the big one, cholera. Right, so you had, did you, did you receive quinine from the Japanese? We, we got some quinine, not enough, but we did get enough to take the edge off it. Mm. And what you about... You know, they're never back to work. They need that back in again. It was, it was always scarce, couldn't it? Was a, a vicious cycle, I, I yeah, take it. Yeah, vicious, yes. vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And what about uh, cholera injections? The cholera injections, we, they, uh, I, we had one compulsion, we had cholera injections before we left Singapore, and now we had it once, I know for sure, up on their fort, but I think there was a second one, I'm not too sure. But I know we had it once. Now, there wasn't enough to, to stop it, unfortunately. So how many cholera deaths would you have been associated with or seen in... in well, to my knowledge of land, the people I know, we had over 20, but there's more than that. Now, you, you were in what was called commonly called Ponds Party, were you? Oh, in Colonel Ponds Party, yeah. 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 And he was a full colonel. He was a full colonel. Yeah. He was second to me. And what was the how, how many troops were in that party? Seven hundred. Seven hundred. So you one mo for seven hundred. One troops. mo for seven hundred. And his medical orderlies. And his medical orderlies. And a few others to help. Yes, sir. Look after them. 
What was uh, Roy's general health like while you were Well, there? T towards the end it was very, very bad because he was working, he was working tw practically 24 hours a day. Mm. And when you say that, how, how come he was working such long hours? Well, there's no one else to do the work on, no one else to the load of it. You, 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 can't, you can't tell people they're going to get ill. No. And they had to be on call. Well, the sick parades used to start from anywhere from about four o'clock in the morning. Well, I think that's probably what I was leading to. He would have sick parades before they went out on the railway. That's right. But he'd also have to be up probably as they stumble back late at night. Well, he, 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 apart from the sick parade in the morning, he do his rounds in the hospital. Yes. And then he had another sick parade in the afternoon. Oh, and when you say hospital, what sort of a facility was that? Well, the hospital by name is a designation, that's the hospital. It was tents, mm -hmm. there's dirt floor, mm -hmm. topping wet, muddy. People lying in mud. If you had a ground sheet, they laid on the ground sheet. And out of the 700, what, what do you think your hospital population would have been? The hospital population? How many, how many would be in the hospital? Well, I'd say at times it could have been up to 200. Mm -hmm. Rick brings me to another point. What, Roy actually had some shrapnel removed from his shot. He, he, he received shrap the shrapnel wound. He, he got a hit at uh, Booker Tima. There was a, 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 a barrage going over and one exploded in the trees and he got hit in the back. Two of our drivers were killed. They were sleeping in a truck. And they were killed. The captain of the, captain of the truck killed the two drivers. They were sleeping in the and uh, Roy got hit in the back. They took him off to hospital and uh, he got back to the unit as quick as he could, as quick as he could. And he was in St. Andrew's Cathedral when they, uh, they didn't get all the uh, shrapnel out of his back and this had caused an abscess. And the abscess broke while he was in working in St. Andrew's Cathedral. And they just sat up there and he carried on and of course then we went away on Air Force. And it was an Air Force, he said to me, he said, I'll have to get you, he said, the lance by my back. He said, that shrap's still in there. And you could feel it's even quite swollen. And uh, he said, I'll have to get you to it for me. I said, okay, we've got to be done, we have to do it. But fortunately it, uh, it did break away and the piece of shrapnel came out. Uh -huh. But he carried, he had it right through, and the fact that he was all the way, he was up on air force, that ship were already. Yes. And uh, then again, of course, he had malaria, and uh, they also had pneumonia, uh, TB, which we found when we got back to, to Changi after air force was finished, but he also had TB. Oh. He was a wonderful man, the work he did was absolutely fantastic. Yes. Now, question I had about both Roy and yourself there that's just slipped out of my mind for a moment. Yes. Uh, you're Japanese or Korean guards? Both. You're, and did either of you get beaten by them? Roy did. Roy got beaten a few times. Mm. I only got kicked in the backside twice, so I got. But uh, Roy got beaten quite a few times for sticking up for his blokes. Trying to stop sick being sent out. Yes. Now, when the we were at Conquita, or I'm yeah. not quite sure what the pronunciation. We called it Conquita, but Conquita. The connect station. When the uh, the rail line yeah, was joined. Yeah, yeah, we were there. Were you able to see it? No, we were, we were about to turn our backs, we weren't allowed to see all the top brass was there. Yes. And uh, the cat mustn't look at the queen when you're in the Japanese. And the funny thing happened, we had a Padre Velika. He was a very quite unassuming bloke. And his curiosity got the better of him. He's quite a lot of shrubbery around the line, I think. Poor old Jeff decided he'd kind of stick his head through these shrubs and what's going on. And he's peering away there and the Jap caught him. And he, he gave a kick on the backside and he goes right through the bush with me. Oh, oh. There's a bloke who's so quick. Now, Velikop was an interesting man, wasn't he? Yeah.
because he wasn't. Uh, he joined up as a private. Yeah. He, he was a minister of, yeah. of the cloth. Yeah. Yeah. Nice fellow, Jeff. Did he survive? No, he died. I think he died at uh, Canterbury. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, when the railway was finished, did, did that finish your work on the railway, or did? You yes, more or less. We 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 finished it a little bit past Concroyter when it finished. When we finished, and we then marched up to Chumaniki again, and we had to get rid of the sick who were up there on the train going away. When they were gone, we then came back. We came back by train, did you, slowly. Did you manage to get on the train straight away, or do you have to walk to a point where you? Well, could... only a short distance, oh. as far as I can remember. And. It, uh, did you, when you came back along all these bridges that had been built by prisoners of war, or did you have any anxiety at any time when you were... Yeah, we, we, we wondered whether the, 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 the timber was going to carry the train or whether we were going down the, down the gully with it, but uh, it stood up. But it would, frequently it would come off the, tra run off the tracks and there would be a, a scream of everybody out. To, and there were the, the train back on the, on the lines again. Yeah, and of course, when, when that happened, it was a golden opportunity for those who had diarrhoea to, to get out the train and relieve themselves. Yeah. And this is when it happened. We weren't the first train on that line. There were quite a number of trains going down that line. And a number of people had done the same thing. And when we got on the train, this fellow one night, the jets were crawling around underneath the hands and knees, and he walked and something he shouldn't have done. <laughs> And what he did with those hands of his and slapping people's faces was nobody's business. Mm. It was done by other people's business. Yes. Yeah. Now the engines on these trains, uh, are they like big locomotives or were they...? No, no, no. Some of them looked like a, were like a diesel, a diesel train. Mm. You could put, you'd take it on road and drive with the rubber tyres on, or you'd take, change the wheels over and drive with the trains while on the railway. Okay. But they did have steam trains as well, they had both. And uh, the steam trains, were not uh, powered with coal, were they? No, there was no coal, only wood. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, they periodically stopped to load up the tender with the more timber. Did you ever have to push the train over? over no, I didn't. Climb? No, I, I didn't. I kept no. out of the way. No. And when you got back down south, where did you go? Did, were you at Kanchanaburi or, or yeah, we, it used we, to be we called Canterbury? We were for about five or six days, mm -hmm. and then we got mustered up there to decide what they were going to do with us. And I would run the crowd of it sent back to Singapore. So you had, back to Changi. So you had the reverse journey and they yeah, the reverse journey. cattle trucks or rice trucks. Yeah, they, so they, they denied us the privilege of travelling first class. They put us in the they put us in the trunk. And I have heard the expression that Changi was like heaven. Yeah. What was it like when you got back there? Was it Changi was home from home. Yes. Yeah. All, all, all this this story of Changi being a horror camp is not true. Mm -hmm. It's not true at all. For three things, you had water, you could drink, you had light, and you had a cover over your head, you had a roof over your head, and you had food. Uh, it wasn't very good food, Mark, it was very, very scarce, not very pleasant, but you should, at least you got it three times a day, which the morning got on working for. You never went in and got a meal on working party, but there, Chang was regular. It was controlled by our own people. We never saw a jet guard and left us alone in Chang. Yes. So there was no bashings, there was no bullets, there was nothing going on. It was unpleasant, it was nasty, but it wasn't a hill. Hill was on the working boat. Air Force was hill. Yes. And any other party was hill. Now, the people that went up to uh, Japan, had they gone when you were? Got back to Changi or oh, was still yeah, sea, sea, there? Oh, Sea Force went to Japan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, sea Force, yeah, Sea Force went to Japan. Uh, I don't know what other force went to Japan, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But a lot more people do go to Japan. They did it tough on the Japanese. No one did it easy anywhere, did they? <laughs> no, not really. No. Even, even those people that were in Changi that hadn't experienced anything worse, they would have thought it was the... It, was, it was boring, it mm. was boring and dull. Yeah. A lot of people didn't like it. What about the 
the uh, I think they called the Chengi University. Did you ever get involved with any? Unlucky that no, I didn't. But I, I believe it's very good. A lot of people came out there very well educated. Mm. Yeah, they're very clever people there. They're, they're all sorts. You name it, they had them. They had judges, they had magistrates, they had engineers, professors. Yes. They got a good education for free. Well, but I didn't pay ten cents a day by the Japanese that they were working. Yeah. What did you ever get paid when you were up on the railway? Once. Mm. I got paid once, and I got about thirty odd dollars for a month's pay, which was better than yeah. Changi. That was only ten cents a day. Yes. Which is three dollars a month. Now, I think you've told me some. I'm trying to choose my words carefully here. Your experiences of some of the officers who expected to continue to enjoy the privileges of their rank while they were up on the railway, uh, were there any of those from Pond's party? No. No. All Pond's party's officers had their job. If it wasn't on the railway line, it was in the camp. They did menial tasks, they did the boreholes, they did cutting wood, drawing water. Ponty kept them working. He's a good he's a good CO Ponty. When your rations came up from I, I presume they came from south, nothing came from the north. We all got the same ration yeah. in Ponds but how did, how did the rations get there? Did you have to walk back and carry them forward or did they come up by truck or was the well, when, it, when, it was, when it was dry, they came up by truck, and when it was wet, they came up by river or by ox cart. Yes. They haven't got to work out, I don't know, they haven't got to work out, but they're somewhere. Yes. Now you, you said you had about 20 cholera patients. Were they, their bodies disposed of by cremation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who did that? Who did the cremation? It all these did. No one did we did it. Mm. Had to build a fire, take so the fire state, put the bodies on. And how how easy is it to get bamboo to burn? It's always you can always find a stack of uh, of old uh, of the dry bamboo, dead bamboo. Mm -hmm. We never seem to have any shortage of uh, of bamboo to burn or wood to burn, we always have fires. Cooks had fire cook our fires going all the time. During the cold epidemic, <coughs> we uh, had buckets of boiling water that you had to dip your, your uh, food utensils in to sterilise before you drew your food, make sure there never got any flies on it. We uh, even stopped, when we could get tobacco, we even stopped rolling cigarettes because you never know what's on your hands, you see. Yes. You be careful what you're putting them out. Because it's so easy to get cholera. I, I find it hard to understand that just by dipping your Dixies in, a, in boiling water it well, is it sufficient it to kill, the, kill germ. the germ. Kill the germ, yeah. Clearly it works. It's better than nothing. Yes. Maybe it was high feeling, yes. but uh, it was better than nothing. And your clothing, uh, whilst you're up on the line, you, did you have boots? Well, that, that, the funny thing happened that it seemed to diminish. You never got any better. Because mm -hmm. it used to wear out. Yes. But it was a very funny sight. Did you, yeah. So did you have a jacky nappy or a No, no, I, I managed to take up two pairs of shorts with me. And boots? Did you manage to have a pair of boots the whole time? Uh, the, I had the same pair of boots I joined the army with. They were fan I'm a, a, a great advocate for Baxter's boots. They were a fantastic pair yes. of boots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, now, so we'll, we'll go back now to Changi. You, you've left the railway and you've gone back to Changi. Yep. And uh, how long were you there before we get to From what we December call December 43 to uh, August 45. August 45, very nearly two years. We thought there was no way in. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did you hear of the peace being declared? The Dickie Bird. Ah, is this your, the clandestine radios? Yeah. Mm. They, they were very well organised, they kept it uh, under very strict control and they had a selected few people who were given a certain amount of information and they were split up and they would go to each hut and very quietly 
tell the inmates what was going on. And what was it? The what day was peace? Is it the fifteenth of August? The fifteenth. August. And nineteen forty-five. Did you? What was the change? Was there a change of attitude by the Japanese uh, that was discernible? Well, we, we knew when the war had finished on the fifteenth of August. The next day, we knew we were told, "Shut up! Don't say anything," because it's only at the moment there are no occupation troops on the island. When they do come, only be a few hundred to start. But for God's sake, don't do anything stupid. Just go back to work, go on to work and try to do your job and come back. They went out, and before you couldn't whistle or sing or talk. But we noticed when the boys came back, they were whistling, mm. and they weren't stopped, and the guards had no blottings. Mm. And then all of a sudden, we were going to stop. Yes. There was no reprisals. This silly, this silly show they had on the ABC uh, about Chang, it was a load of rubbish. When it's finished, we never saw a guard, they just disappeared quietly, and nothing happened. Everybody did the pink eyes, they were laughing and joking, but no nips, no nothing. Next thing we know, in come the uh, occupation troops. Did any arrive initially by parachute or...? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. The ones I saw came through the main gate. Okay. And then how quickly did you get back to Australia? Uh, I, I got back... I, I, I had to stay back, or we had to stay back, until all the sick troops had gone. Yes. The fit troops, they went, went uh, by plane, they flew them out, and the sick people went by hospital ship. So we got all the sick away, and then we, I was flying out a month, 10 others, 15 others, in Catalina. Now, Roy Mills wasn't well, when, no, when, Roy was, when did he go out? Roy was in hospital, Roy was in hospital from the time we got back from, uh, from the Air Force. He was back to the hospital, I was right away. Mm. And uh, I, I think he would have come back by, by ship, I think. I don't know exactly. Mm. So I presume he would come back by ship. He was a pretty sick boy. Whoops. I think you might have to sing Yes. No, it's no, no I'm just power still on. Put it out of focus. No, it dropped down there. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's better. Uh, and during the period, you, you said when you were back there and waiting to come home to Australia, you're working uh, with the sick people. What doc Which doctors did you work with during that period? I'm sorry. While you were waiting to come back to Australia yourself, mm -hmm. I think you implied that you were uh, working as a nursing orderly, looking after yes, sick I was people. Yes, working in the hospital. And you must have been had contact with a different lot of officers, uh, medical officers. Yes. Yes. Do you, do you recall any of them? Yes, uh, Billy Colonel Boy was one of them, Kevin Fagan was another one, uh, the Carls, uh, Lloyd Carl. Oh yes, there were two Carls, weren't yeah, there? Lloyd and Frank, mm. and Rowley Richards. But he was the boyish looking Yeah, the second part of the 15th Infantry Regiment. And then there's some Dutch doctors there, and uh, three Indian doctors, they were WO2s. One, W01, do we? And, uh, about it? Yeah. About it? Tail? Oh, yes. Uh, Fagan was another one of our uh, knights, wasn't he? He was knighted subsequently, I think. He was? He was knighted. Was you he? Know, the same as Dunlop. Kevin. And Coates Kevin? was. Yeah, yeah right. Right. Good sure he was. Good mm. yeah. Did you have any contact with any of the doctors that went up? and looked after the natives? No. No. Yeah, there were about eight Australian doctors that went and looked after the natives. They don't give me their job. Then when you got back to Australia, how long was it before you were discharged? I was discharged on the 12th of December. The same year? Every time I went back to the... What, DFO? No. What would it be? Anyway, every time I went back and reported back, they used to give me 30 days leave. 28 days, they've just given me. Uh -huh. And I'm sure that if I hadn't have said no, I want to get out, 
I could still be drawing 28 days leave. They didn't want to discharge me, they didn't. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I finally got out and I was discharged on the 13th of December. Now, 12th of December. And I don't know if you've told me that you continued uh, in the citizen military forces. Yes, I, I, I went back to the same old job. And uh, while I was there, one of my mates, he was a, a captain in the militia. And he said, so what about joining up? I said, don't be stupid, I said, that's nearly six years. Oh, I wanted better help because it get off the ground, it was a bit hard to get recruits. So he took me back, went back for a couple of years and in the uh, well, that's seventy seven Lancers, which was an armor division. Yes. Yeah. We had two scout cars and a, a three ton truck. So that would have been uh, that would have been a little bit yeah. later though. That would have been nineteen forty eight. That that, that, would, that would be yeah forty eight. It would be forty eight forty nine yeah. maybe. Right, but right. you were married in nineteen forty seven. Yes. Is that right? Yes, right. And uh, how did you meet Hilda? Ah. When the three musketeers, Jackie Sharp, Keith Anzen and myself were all very close mates in the unit. And we stuck together right through and we well, even came home on the same plane. And uh, being from the bush and I was staying in Sydney, they put me over their places in rotation, you see. And uh, we decided that if we had the holiday for three years, we were going to have three months leave which we said about doing, so we had quite a stack of money in the bank. And uh, now we, we first night was, was a night at, uh, what night club was it? <laughs> the first one we first met. Oh, okay. Charles yeah. Thomas, was it? Borough Street. Was something Thomas, wasn't it? Something, like something Thomas, wasn't it? It could have been Thomas, I'm not quite sure. What well, was the proper name of it? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Me. You sure you don't remember the name? Charles Thomas, was it? Something Thomas? Night Club. Uh, I, I can't remember, George. Yeah. Too late. Like, doesn't matter. Yeah, anyway, we, we, they, we decided to go along uh, have a night out. And Keith Hansen, his girlfriend, had turned him over while he was away, so he was on his own. Jackie Sharp had a girlfriend. I didn't have a girlfriend, so. We didn't know any shit, so we don't worry. Well, Texas said Jackie, so it, well, Fran's got some friends, so these two friends come along, the tall dark girl and the little short red-headed girl. <laughs> and I said, okay, I want the dark one. And he said, I want the red one, so we've got that. We both married them. How about that for a happy story? It is a right. nice story. And, and my, his wife has died, and I'm lucky enough yeah, I still got mine. Keith married Madge, and Well, do you think there's anything else we need to cover on the on the war? I might just stop.